If you look for it, every day has cause for celebration. Celebrate a friend for their promotion baby wedding life thing. Celebrate yourself for keeping the couch warm. It's no easy feat, especially if it's a big couch. Or maybe you just want to celebrate living in 2023 where you can get beer, wine, and spirits delivered from Drizzly in under 60 minutes without leaving said couch. So download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com and get your favorite drinks delivered today. Maryland sports fans, there's only one sports book in the great state of Maryland with over 50 years experience booking bets and supporting customers. Betfred Sportsbook at Long Shots is now open and is the only sports book in Frederick offering cash betting on football, basketball, world soccer, and more. Visit the Betfred Sportsbook at I-270 and MD-85 in Frederick, right next to Long Shots Off-Track Betting. Go to BetfredSports.com for more information and your chance to win exclusive merchandise. Must be 21 or older. Play responsibly. For help, call 1-800-GAMBLER. Hey, what's up? This is Sully from Godsmack. Strap on those boots, baby, because you are now in the trenches of the war room with the one and only Mistress Carrie right here on the Mistress Carrie podcast. What's up? This is Joe Rogan, and you're listening to Mistress Carrie. Her hair is so lovely. Pretty eyes. Hey, this is Brent from Shinedown, and you're listening to Mistress Carrie. Hey, Carrie, go put your brow on, girl. Hey, this is Steven Tyler, and you'll be listening to the baddest bitch in Boston, Mistress Carrie. What's up? This is Aaron from Stan. And you're listening to Mistress Carrie. Hi, everybody. This is Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters, and you're listening to the one, the only, Mistress Carrie. Hey, this is David from the band Disturbed, and you're listening to the baddest bitch in Boston, Mistress Carrie. Hi, Bruce Dickinson here from Iron Maiden. Yes, indeed. Miss Whiplash herself, Mrs. Carrie, is here to um, unchain your brain. Hi, this is Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and you're listening to Mistress Carrie. This is Dennis Leary. You are listening to my favorite, Mistress Carrie. Hey, this is Corey from Stone Sour, and you're listening to. You have the privilege of listening to Mr. Scary. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Hey, it's Mistress Carrie reporting for duty from MCHQ for a bonus episode of the Mistress Carrie podcast. Full length episodes of the Mistress Carrie podcast come out every Wednesday, and every weekday, you get the sit rep. The Situation Report has all your rock news, music headlines, and industry info. And you get it in less than five minutes. But every once in a while, I get an unexpected call and you get a bonus episode of the podcast. And that's what happened this week. WWE superstar Drew McIntyre checked in before the WWE Friday Night Smackdown at the DCU Center this Friday night, October 7th. Drew and I had a chance to talk about how difficult it is for a guy of his size to travel on commercial airlines. We talked about the music that he grew up listening to and what he's been listening to lately, especially in the gym. And Drew dropped some pretty serious rock and roll names of artists that he's become friends with and even who attended his wedding. We also talked about his career, the ups and downs, his injuries, when he thinks he'll retire, and what happens backstage at the WWE when they've been talking so much literal smack about each other. So, allow me to introduce you to Drew McIntyre from the WWE. Hello. Hello, hello. Hey, good morning. How are you? Excellent. How are you? I'm doing all right. Fantastic to hear. I appreciate you getting up first thing in the morning. Oh, it's not technically first thing. Um, I got up early and I had uh, my mistress and a mister who puts me back together and causes me great pain so that I'm able to wrestle. I was working on me from about seven till nine, coming up for a few hours, getting my body put back together. How difficult is it for someone that does what you do for a living to get up first thing in the morning? Like, I can't imagine what you have to put your body through to be a professional wrestler. Well, I've been doing it for over 20 years now, so I'm certainly feeling it um, from head the very top of my head to the very bottom of my toes. But everything hurts kind of equally right now. The problem if you have something that hurts more than usual, hurts more than the rest of your body. And, you know, with the knowledge we have today about the human body and recovery, you know, I try and stay top of things with my stretching and hydration. And, you know, like I said before, I got on the call today getting worked on by the massage therapist and trying to keep everything as good as possible. But I just don't like mornings. I'm not a morning person. But in this job, 
you have to be a morning person because you've got those early morning flights. We've got about three shows a week or 52 weeks a year. So I try to learn to become a morning person. I've been trying for about 20 years, but it's still not work. I'm not a morning person either, and I don't understand morning people, and I'm married to one, so I just don't get it. That's insane. I don't understand it at all. It's, it's you know, you got to get up and see the first light of the day. It's still light when I got up. I'm not getting up at 5 o'clock at night, 6 o'clock at night. Like, if I get my choice, I'm getting up at, like, 11. Exactly. You 100% understand me, Drew. You get it. Like, yeah, like, yeah, sleep is essential you know, for recovery, and then you don't want to be tired throughout the day. And, well, why don't you just have a nap? Well, why don't you just sleep a regular amount of time when you don't have to nap? When it comes to all of the traveling that you have to do for the WWE, regular-sized people have a hard enough time fitting on a plane. When you are a mammoth mountain of a human being like yourself, how the hell do you fit on a plane? Uh, not very comfortably most of the time. It depends on the airline. Like I'm, uh, you know, just about six six and two seventy five, so I fit just. And you know, I'll usually be up the front of the plane in like a, a business seat. Which, by the way, over the years they've made smaller and smaller and smaller. I've been doing this for like fifteen years in America. I've noticed those those plane seats. Those that leg room is just getting smaller every single year. But then I look to my right as I'm uncomfortable and not feeling too good about my position. Then I'll see somebody like Omos who works for us on WWE Raw. He's seven foot three. And I go, you know what? Things ain't that bad. I could be seven foot three, like Omos over there. I mean, I just came home from Vegas a few days ago and just trying to wrestle it. Like, I'm just trying to imagine all of you guys on a flight together wrestling for the armrest. And the flight attendant not being able to handle it. Uh, well, maybe back in the day, you know, things would be a bit crazier. Uh, you know, on the plane with, with wrestlers on there. But these days, everybody's pretty subdued. Um, everybody, you know, just keeps fly with their headphones on. They've usually got their face in their phones as opposed to, you know, harassing the, the steward or stewardess for more bottles of alcohol than things would get rowdy. Then they'd be asking for more leg room and maybe lying down in the aisles. But these days... Everybody's got it together. We're all well behaved. So we just we get on with it because we're very lucky to, to be working for WWE and living the dream. WWE Friday Night SmackDown is going to be at the DCU Center on Friday night. And uh, New England has always been a hotbed for passionate wrestling fans. Um, being a Scottish guy, there's got to be a lot of your fellow countrymen that are in and around the Boston area, right? Oh, there is indeed. Um, I hear all the time across America, but especially, uh, you know, in the, the Boston area, everybody's either got Scottish descent or Irish descent, and um, they're Celtics and very, very proud of it. And then I go, well, okay, but are you really, or is it your ancestor's cousin's dog, this part Scottish or part Irish? And then I'll see them in the bars or see them, uh, you know, a couple of drinks in them, and I'm like, wow, you definitely are Scottish or um, <laughs> Irish. The um, the last couple of years have made it hard, not only in the rock and roll industry, but obviously in wrestling, the travel industry. And now that the world is finally opening back up for people that haven't been to Scotland um, that want to go, especially Americans that have not traveled to Scotland. Tell me about what they can expect if they go there. Brag about your homeland a little bit. Ooh. Just exactly like Outlander, if you've seen Outlander. Um, everybody's in kilts and handsome. I'm going to sweep you off your feet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there, there's all the rolling hills. That is uh, the true uh, part of it. You know, I never appreciated Scotland when I lived there because, you know, I was a kid. I moved to America when I was 21. You don't really appreciate where you grow up. And it wasn't until I was away that I was like, wow. You know, we're a pretty cool country. There's only 5 million Scottish people with such an incredible history. You're going to visit anywhere, visit Edinburgh, the capital. It's still got the cobbled streets and that we had in the past. It's got a castle on a hill that lights up at night. It's huge. Um, all the bars and restaurants are amazing. You can take a tour underneath um, of Edinburgh, like old Edinburgh. You walk down in the old streets and you can see the people above you. And they have like, just a regular tour and they have a midnight ghost tour. It's such a cool place to visit. And obviously, you've got the you know the haggis, the whiskey, 
and everything else you need to try while you're there, but there's nowhere quite like Scotland. I'm not just seeing that because I'm from there. Yeah, it's really cool. You, you talk about you don't really know what you have till it's gone, and when it comes to your wrestling career, uh, it was gone for a bit, and now it's back, obviously. What did it mean to you to to be back and, and healthier than ever, like you said? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've been gone and back for a few reasons in my career. I've been doing this a long time, over 20 years. I've been gone and back because of injuries, and I've been gone from WWE. I mentioned, you know, I got signed when I was 21. Uh, when I came to America to WWE, I was living the dream somewhere along the line. I forgot this was the dream. I wasn't giving it my all anymore, and I got fired uh, when I was 29 from WWE. And I was like, oh, no, I just lost my dream job. I had to look myself in the mirror and say, this is kind of on you, buddy. And that's the time where I had to decide, am I going to keep pursuing uh, my dream here? Am I going to give it up and try something else? And I decided, you know, this is what you were born to do. Look at yourself honestly. What are your negatives? Where can you improve? And I really worked to better myself, you know, not just as a wrestler and with, you know, my look, my in-ring ability, my talking ability, but as a person as well. I was very immature that came to America. Boy, I never had a chance to grow up. And I finally kind of became a man, became the wrestler I was supposed to be, started fulfilling my potential and returned to WWE and became a two-time WWE champion. And I'm never going to get to come to Worcester this Friday, kick some butt, and then on Saturday at Extreme Rules, beat up Karrion Cross. So things are on the up and up road, Drew McIntyre, after a few downs. What kind of rock music did you grow up listening to in Scotland? And then obviously, what are you listening to, especially on all those long flights when you're crammed in business class? Uh, in Scotland, you know, all we have is bagpipes, and that's all we hear all day long. I'm like, that's what a lot of people assume, though. <laughs> when I'm talking to them, they're like, you just love bagpipes. So, well, I mean, they're all right. My theme music's bagpipes, so I'm not going to sit and listen to them all day long. As a kid, I, I was a huge fan of and Guns N' Roses were my, I guess, favorite rock group when I was uh, like 10, 11 years old, and, and I was still a fan of them. To this day, um, listening on planes, even believe the variety of songs. I'm actually on Spotify right here. I guess I'll tell you exactly what I've been listening to recently because it changes the freaking month. I got a Dumb and Dumber soundtrack here. I got some ACDC here. I got the Rocky Horror Picture Show soundtrack. I must have been listening to that as well recently. So, Belton John about Punk Essentials. And, uh, the Grunge Forever. And Slipknot. That must have been my gym workout. Yeah, quite a mix going on here. There's nothing more motivating than Corey Taylor and Slipknot, for sure, in the gym. Oh, yeah. I mean, on the plane, I'm probably listening to more Stone and Sour, I guess, if there's some Corey going on. And I don't want to be rocking out too hard when I'm sitting in those seats that I don't really fit in. <laughs> but once I get in the gym, it's Slipknot all the way. Most of the time, those guys are huge wrestling fans. So it's always funny that the wrestlers love the rock music, but that the rock stars always love going to the wrestling matches and hanging out with the WWE superstars. Have you met yeah. Corey and the guys in Slipknot? I, I haven't. I, I know he's a big wrestling fan. I don't know. A couple of the guys are buddies with him. Uh, one of our superstars, Happy Corbin, I believe he's boys with him. But it is amazing you know, how many people you'll meet that are wrestling fans, and you're a fan of them also. And Adam Jones from Two is a big uh, wrestling fan, and um, he's somebody I met that didn't really know the band too well. They weren't as established in the UK and my age group anyway. When I met, I just got to know him as a cool guy and went to see them rehearse one time, went to see them in concert. I was like, damn, you're really good at this music thing. It was the same with uh, Billy Corgan. The first time I met him, I hadn't really listened to too much Smashing Pumpkins, but got along with Billy, who was a big wrestling fan. Became good friends, came to my wedding and stuff, and I eventually listened to his music, and I was like, wait a minute, I know these songs. I was like, Billy, you're pretty good at that music thing. I was like, yeah, thanks, dude. I appreciate that. <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's interesting that they are more bonded through, and, you know, personality-wise, and a love of wrestling as opposed to the music, and then I listened to the music and realized, obviously, they're very talented at it. Well, you were dropping some massive names in rock and roll, and it is kind of ama- uh, it is kind of amazing how many rock stars are just so into wrestling. And I love the fact that you're meeting these guys and don't even really know who they are, and then you realize it later, and it's like, oh shit, yeah, you're good at this music thing. Uh, oh yeah, I mean, I remember seeing like Billy in particular in concert for the first time, 
Um, after like known him for a few years, and I finally got to see a live show. And I also didn't realize that um, he played like, most of the instruments by himself, namely guitar. And then the same kind of deal as when I told him, "Hey, band's pretty cool." And I was like, "Thanks." I was like, "Man, you're really good at guitar." I was like, "Yeah, thanks, dude." <laughs> 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 But again, the friendship didn't come from like knowing uh, him from music. It was just meeting him, getting to bond uh, as a person, and also through a love of wrestling, and then seeing the fact that he's actually really good at this music thing. <laughs> That's why he's such a big uh, rock star. Do you have any musical ability at all? Uh, I like to feel like I'm a, a guitar player that hasn't actually taken the time to learn the guitar yet. Um, I, I took lessons when I was 11 to 13, and every time I pick it up, I have so much fun, but just I'm on the road so much, it's such a commitment um, that I'm just not, I guess, dedicated the time to it, but I have got it as part of my retirement plan. As soon as I retire, I'm going to move on to my second phase, which will be part of a band, and uh, I will play that guitar. And even though I can't really sing, maybe I'll like, take up some punks, I guess you don't really technically have. Actually, what am I talking about? You don't have to want to sing today. I listen to half of these artists in the charts. I can even name one of them, and they're still auto-tuned. I could just auto-tune myself. Screw it. I'll play guitar. I'll sing myself. There we go. There's yeah. A career with the finished wrestler. You can you can do almost anything with Pro Tools nowadays. We can make you a rock star, no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll contact you all first because this is going to be the thing that I do once I retire. My wife's always on me, like, "Hey, what are you going to do? Like, you've been obsessed with wrestling. It's all you've done your whole life, and you retire." And I was like, "Well, I've still got a few years left, but I'll figure it out." So we'll figure that out. I'll just be a huge rock star. There we go. Easy. Well, that's what I was going to ask you before I let you go. I, I don't want your fans to start freaking out because you're dropping the big retirement word. You're not going anywhere for a while, right? Oh, no. I'll be around for a long time. Everybody seems to think, you know, I'm in my mid-40s now because I've been around for so long. And a lot of our other superstars, I won't name names, Seamus, are in their mid-40s now. And they're <laughs> long, they're around, <laughs> around as long as me. And I'm technically one of the younger veterans uh, very very grizzled in our industry i'm 37 just not long term 37 and i've been doing this since i was 15 so i've still got another good 10 years in me at least with all of the smack that you guys talk and and all of the things that you guys say about each other in interviews um you bump into each other backstage at the dcu center on friday night and they find out that you've been doing radio shows calling each other old and stuff has it ever almost broken out into a wrestling match before you got in the ring back there? <sighs> no one ever says it to my face. I mean, I do more interviews than anybody in the company. I bite miles. It's not even close. So occasionally, you know, I like to talk my trash. Despite that, I mean, every single interview I do. And I might hear somebody who's a little upset and mouthing off backstage. But as soon as they see me, they're not saying a thing. And then once they get in the ring, I'm like, come on, give me a hard shot. Like, it will make me pay for all that trash we're talking, and I end up beating them up as well. So I end up just <laughs> talking trash about them. They talk behind my back, and I beat them up anyway. So uh, who cares? But when it comes to Seamus, um, you know, we had a couple of shows last weekend where I was ripping on him. We were actually tagging together, and I was ripping on him on the microphone for being, you know, 95 years old um, <laughs> these days and close, close to retirement. And we we're going back and forth on the mic. But, you know, we're very close, and we do a brother relationship. You know, I was. He was best man at my wedding. I'm going to be the best man at his wedding. I can't wait for the speech and burn turn to shred. Uh, that's the kind of relationship we have, and we do beat each other up pretty good in the ring as well. <laughs> Those are some giant tuxedos required at a wedding for a WWE superstar. That's the beauty of the kilt. Like, you don't have to really worry about it except the waist, and then it can come down to your knees, it can come down to your calves, it doesn't really matter, and uh, you don't have to wear underpants. You love them. <laughs> That'll be what I'm thinking about Friday night at the DCU Center. WWE Friday Night Smackdown rolling into the DCU Friday night. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today, Drew. No, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Hopefully see you down at uh, Worcester. There he is, WWE superstar Drew McIntyre, who will be appearing at WWE Friday Night Smackdown this Friday night, October 7th, at the DCU Center in Worcester, Massachusetts. You can check the show notes of this episode to get the link to get your tickets, and you'll also find all of the links to find Drew McIntyre online, and you'll find the link to this episode's corresponding playlist. I make a playlist for every episode of the Mistress Carrie podcast. Normally, it's filled with all of my guest music, but in this case, it's filled with Drew McIntyre's friends, 
and the music that he listens to while he's at the gym. I also put some Scottish classics in there as well. If you liked what you heard, follow and subscribe to the Mistress Carrie podcast. New full-length episodes come out every Wednesday, and every weekday you get the sit rep. The Situation Report is all your rock news, music headlines, and industry info in five minutes. You can also hang out with me every Tuesday night at 8.30 Eastern on my Facebook page for my live streaming video show, Cocktails in the War Room. And you can also check out the Mistress Carrie radio show. Get the details on everything you need to know at mistresscarrie.com. The Mistress Carrie podcast, a proud member of the Pantheon Podcast Network. The Venture X card from Capital One gives you premium travel benefits. Perfect for seeing Taylor Swift The Eras Tour. Presented by Capital One. Oh, I do love her. Earn five times miles on flights and ten times miles on hotels through Capital One Travel. Enjoy your stay in Suite 13. Whoa, 13? That's Taylor's lucky number. The Venture X card from Capital One. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. See CapitalOne.com for details. Progressive presents Adjusting to the Suburbs. You just bought a home in the suburbs, but no one told you about all the birds, specifically this one, who seems to be calling out Roy. Roy. But who exactly is Roy? And why doesn't he ever respond? Maybe Roy is just bird speak for save with Progressive by bundling your home and auto. I guess until Roy answers, we'll never know. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company coverage provided in service by affiliates and third-party insurers.